But thank you, thanks for, for attending this. Yes, golem number two, uh, which is, I think, very much compatible with golem number one, because we are, care a lot about graphic user interfaces and how to make um, you know, the, the outputs of computational literary studies more accessible to, to a wider audience. In this project, we have very um, focused research questions that we want to address. The first one is how do story traits spread, become successful, and disappear over time across languages, across countries? And the second one is looking at how which narrative strategies um, have a stronger impact on readers. So these are two big challenges, uh, I think. And to address this in a way um, that foregrounds content and the way in which stories are written, uh, what we have to do is to get rid of a lot of the contextual factors that play a role in history and society, like institutional powers and pedagogical decisions, school systems that um, have shaped uh, the texts that have been transmitted in, in, uh, throughout literary history. So that's why uh, I decided to focus on very specific type of data, which is fan fiction. Um, so text written by mostly amateur writers um, who reinterpret stories and further transmit the modification of them. So there is an explicit intent here of changing something and transmitting it uh, over time, making it available to, to other readers. So in this way, the easy easier part, I would say, uh, of the challenge is that we know exactly what the source material is and we can see what has changed from the canonical text uh, throughout times in, in the different modifications. Just to give you an example of what I mean by transmission of story traits, uh, let's take the fan fiction about Harry Potter and the canonical text, of course, it are those written by J.K. Rowling in, in English and Harry Potter is part of the Gryffindor house. Uh, but then, you know, in fan fiction, people have started changing these things, and one of the things they change that in some stories, uh, Harry Potter is part of the Slytherin house. So this is a change. And these kind of changes uh, can happen within one language, on one platform, uh, among a certain community of readers, but there can be influences across different uh, fandoms, different uh, communities of readers, or different languages. Um, so what we are trying to look at is specifically track these lines of, of influences, this phylogenesis of uh, transmission. And we are doing this, as I will show you in a minute, across uh, five languages, but one example here could be that maybe this change of house for Harry Potter first appeared in uh, Korean language, and then um, went, has been received back and adapted in, uh, in, language, in English language fiction, uh, for instance. But then at the same time, from Korean language also went on to influence fan fiction written in Indonesian. And then both the stories that have been written in Korean and Indonesian influenced stories written in English. So what we are trying to do is to try to detect these patterns of transmissions and, and modifications. We have, yeah, we have uh, uh, five languages we are working with, so English, Spanish, Italian, Korean, and Indonesian. Uh, so we're covering quite a lot of countries. countries. These are just some of the few countries where these languages are, are, are spoken. And also showing um, uh, their cultural distance, for instance. So also taking into account how the uh, values, the um, societal organization of different countries can play a role in, in, in try to um, determine what factors are more, more influencing um, what, what traits get transmitted uh, across time and across uh, languages. We also have sources, uh, different data sources. Most of, they're all for, of online fiction platforms. So we have our own, fanfiction.net, but also Wattpad. So mostly amateur writers publishing uh, online. So it's a very much an interdisciplinary work combining uh, modeling of, of text, uh, so computational literary studies, but the testing of hypotheses is very much related to a clearly defined and very specific set of hypotheses uh, put forth by a cultural evolution theory. And this is interesting because they have been either proved or disproved in, uh, in other uh, domains, like uh, technology or visual arts, but there's not much work about fiction. So we want to see, okay, maybe this uh, hypothesis about cultural evolution are holding for, uh, for some domains, but that's not the case when creativity and the arts are, are involved. Just a quick overview of the, the whole project. Um, so there's a part of infrastructure building, because before we can answer these questions for uh, more than 10 million stories, because this is the size of the data that we have, uh, we have to create uh, some kind of data that we can work with. So we are uh, interlinking existing data, metadata, uh, that we get from online platforms, um, 
together with information not just from the text, but also from reader response. So how many people have read these stories, how many of these people like these stories, and uh, how many comments did they receive, and also what kind of comments did this story receive. Then we will enrich the data we have through various NLP pipelines to add more information, like some of the ones have been uh, also presented by Banche before, so topic modeling, name entity recognition, and, and other stuff. Then we'll do uh, the testing of our hypothesis, but then we also want to go back to the actual readers, and, and after we select some text based on the properties that we have seen are more popular, for instance, we go back to the readers and ask them, them okay, do you really feel the same way that we think you feel because we have this kind of data supporting uh, our, uh, our hypothesis? So we want uh, to go back with, to the real readers. Just to give you an example of what can be done um, just by using metadata, so not, not looking at the text even. So here we looked at, uh, borrowing a method from uh, ecology, we looked at the significant co-occurrences between species. In this case, the species are just the tags that the authors assign to a text. And the first, we see two different trends here. The first one uh, is about angst, which is a tag used to, for um, referring to very specific narrative effect. So a certain kind of um, feeling of discomfort that the author wants to achieve uh, on, on the reader. And emotional heart is a tag referring to a way of dealing with the characters in the story. So there's a connection between what people are doing in the story with what they want to achieve on the readers. And this graph is showing the first appearance of the tag emotional hurt, so in 2012, within the Harry Potter English fan fiction corpus. And we see that even in the uh, following years, it's always significantly associated with the tag emotion, uh, angst, meaning that um, very often, when people want to achieve this specific narrative effect on readers, they rely on this specific narrative technique of making a character suffer in the story. So this, this is a trend, that, an association that we found it's uh, very, very frequent and, uh, and, and also increasingly more common. An opposite trend, we found it with uh, two other uh, tags. So romance is, is a genre and one specific subgenre is psychological drama. So psychological drama first appeared as a tag uh, in 2011 57% of the times this tag appeared was, was associated with the tag romance. So psychological drama as a way of dealing with, of, of writing a story, was um, born in the context of romance. But in the future years, it has been used with a lot of other genres. So it could be that where we see some traits that appear in relation to a specific genre, specific other traits, but then they just go and evolve in, in a different way. So these are some of the trends that we want to look at. Um, another thing, for instance, we can do is look at topics over time, and here we are looking at the paragraph level because we want to detect innovation. So how do people start to talk about characters in a different way, for instance? And if you look at the paragraph level, you can detect slight changes in, uh, how in, in the words frequently associated with, uh, with the name of a character, for instance. So here's always the case of uh, English fan fiction about Harry Potter. And I think this is a selection of only the stories where Hermione is uh, the main character. And so as you see, um, the, this topic was uh, more popular in 2012, then uh, lost a little bit of its popularity, whereas this other topic about trains so, um, um, and platforms uh, and et cetera, so the, that uh, semantic field appeared um, very early, but then gained popularity only uh, later on. So this is the kind of things that, that we can look at. Um, these are the kind of metadata that we can have, just so, so you have a quick look at the raw data. So we have tags assigned by the authors about the, um, the characters, features in, in the stories, the relationship between the characters, but also more freeform stuff about genre or uh, themes that, that we can find in, in these stories. And we have the reader response part. There are, um, of course, a lot of legal and ethical issues when dealing with this kind of data because these are uh, data that amateur writers uh, are posting online and often within like safe spaces that what they consider to be safe spaces because they know the kind of people they're addressing. So 
the ethical concern here, how, uh, what right do we have to take this kind of data and, and analyze them and, and study them and using them to improve our tools. So we are doing this always uh, trying to communicate with these platforms and also posting announcements on, on the platform to make the readers aware of the work that we want to do. And uh, everything we will do will be anonymized, so we are kind of losing the focus of the, the text as a, a, an object we want to identify, but we're just uh, looking at the um, adopting an evolutionary perspective at broader changes within the whole system. So it's not, the focus is not on, on specific texts. And so this has been done by, by other projects already. It's what's called the derived data. So that's the focus, right? We want to uh, go around the problem of copyright and make something available that can be reused by, by other researchers in, in the future. Of course, the famous uh, um, Trust uh, Extractor Features data set, but also a few other examples that uh, have used different tools to generate um, features that can be used by other researchers without having access to the full text. What, can we, what kind of information do we have? Well, the, here you have examples of, of things that is already available, normally product, pr produced by the authors, but then we will add other things uh, like about um, ling linguistic properties, stylistic properties, thematic features, all modeled via uh, NLP. And uh, a thing that we want to do here is just keep track of the provenance of the, our interpretations and, and the value that we assign. So if we assign a sentiment value or a topic, we will always describe and make sure that people can trace back the original pipeline that led to producing a certain value. So that maybe competing values can be assigned uh, for, for sentiment or, or for a topic depending on which methods do you use. Um, we need a way of structuring this kind of information, so we are looking at an ontology because we want to store this in, in a knowledge graph that can be queried and, uh, so that people can build their own specific subsets if they have more um, specific research questions. I'm not a fool, I'm not doing this alone, so I'm, having, I'm in dialogue with uh, a lot of other people, other projects on this. If you want, on, on our website, there's a, there are the slides of a recent workshop where we discussed these uh, ontological issues. And just to give you an example of the problems that we're facing, so these are some of the golems that we have in, uh, in cultural history. So the legend uh, um, of the, the, the rabbi in, in Prague, then the expression in movies, uh, uh, um, novels about robots, but then we have Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Clash of Clans, the Pokemon, and, and Minecraft. So these are all kind of golems. And if you want to do a query and see what are the, the differences between these types of golems, how do you look for, for this in, uh, in a knowledge base? Well, first of all, I made a case of a popular culture, but this is something that relates also to, to other issues, like is Zeus the same type of character as Jupiter? Well, yeah, in, in, in primary school they told me so, but then maybe, <laughs> maybe that's not the case, right? <laughs> there are some, a few differences. So one possible way to, to deal with this uh, is to uh, have a more abstract uh, entity to, that can refer to different concepts of a character and different expression in, in different stories, so that traits referring to a character can be tracked uh, over time. And here it's just an example of how maybe the original Harry Potter character is different from uh, an expression of the Harry Potter character in a fan fiction story, but they both refer to the same character abstraction because somehow Harry Potter is part of the collective imagery and, and we have a, a, an idea of who Harry Potter is. Um, yeah, we have other issues, uh, and I'm going to conclude now about um, the information that we want to store in this knowledge graph. So not only about characters, but also other things related to style, and other strategies, uh, themes, uh, types of dialogues, opening and closures, story shapes. So these are all things that we want to make available, but there's no, currently no way, no standardized way of encoding this and making it uh, available in a new knowledge graph. So there's, there's some work to do here. And if you want to collaborate, please uh, let me know because it's a, it's, a, it's a tough thing. And yeah, just a quick thing about um, uh, user interface. Uh, I was able to actually adapt a tool uh, develop, um, conceived for drama analysis. So this is the Dracor interface, maybe you recognize it. And we changed it, we made a few changes because uh, what, when people talk about um, fan fiction, they're normally interested, of course, in the characters. We also have the dramatis persona in, in plays. But we also want to add information just at, at a glance about number of chapters, paragraphs, and the reader response. 
So this would be maybe a simple way of making some subsets of uh, our corpora available for, for specific research. What's next? Well, we will have the first public release of the database in uh, January next year with the Sparkle endpoint, also web interface, uh, the one I just showed you, and also an API because people don't want to learn Sparkle to, to get the data, so they can just either download it from uh, the, the website or use the Python API to, to get this information. And let me just spend two words about uh, the people because uh, all this is possible by a very interdisciplinary international team. So uh, there's a one literary study person, narratologist, that's me, but I also hired uh, people coming from statistics, uh, from NLP, we have uh, data scientists collaborating, we have data stewards made available by our university, and we are embedded within a uh, wonderful group of computational linguists, so I can knock in the next door and I really uh, ask questions about N NLP issues uh, every time I want. And, and the best are the PhDs, They're, they know so much and uh, always uh, willing to help. And we also have five amazing scientific advisors coming from uh, different disciplines that can support us in, in building this thing. And I, uh, the topic of this, um, this year conference is about collaboration as an opportunity. And I think um, once we have this funded project, we have the responsibility of doing something in this respect. And also to increase the diversity and the multilingualism in our project. So I have this as a, as a focus in the Golem project, so because we're dealing with the five languages, and trying to look at the, at the whole world. Uh, but also in choices in hiring people, we, we paid attention to this. And the University of Groningen made available actually additional funding for a PhD position, funded 50%. So I'm actually looking for a university who wants to partner up to fund the other 50% for a, a PhD student coming from the Global South or from Asia to work on uh, computational literary studies. So if you have uh, any, any money left, please let me know. We can, we can do this. Thank you very much. And sorry for going over time.